G'day everybody and welcome to Andrew's Art and Models. Today I have a double build for you, a rather special double build. I'm going to be doing two 172nd scale Airfix Spitfires and I'm going to be making them to, well, to replicate two Spitfires from a specific squadron. It's actually 602 Squadron from the Royal Air Force and this is uh, from Aircraft Base 1940. So. One plane's going to be a, an aircraft which has seen a bit of action, so it's reasonably weathered. The other plane is going to be a specific plane that was flown by the uh, gentleman at the beginning of the video, uh, Flight Lieutenant Dunlop Yuri from 602 Squadron. So the story behind it is uh, essentially this plane had only really just arrived at the airfield from the factory. So you can imagine it's probably done a test flight, maybe a ferry flight to the airfield, and that was it. It hadn't even had time to put the markings on it uh, at all. So it was just exactly as it arrived from the factory. And uh, he took it up in a scramble, and uh, it did not last very long. It took a few 20mm uh, hits from uh, 109, and uh, made a mess of it. So he managed to land it. He was wounded uh, from splinters but the uh, plane itself was pretty much a write-off. There was so much splinter damage in there and structural damage that no, it was gone. So it had a record short life of around about 15 minutes, uh, this aircraft. So I thought, yep, let's, let's do a little build of that. Perfect little build. I found plenty of references for it online as well as the pilot himself. And uh, that artwork at the beginning is a revamp that I did of artwork that I'll put later in the video uh, from an artist in his squadron. So. Uh, yeah, I had a lot of fun building this and uh, as you can see here, I am just starting the process of putting the cannon holes in uh, Really crucial to get these in at the beginning thin down the background or thin down the uh, backing rather make it nice and thin So it looks a, a reasonable thickness and uh, I also scribe a few extra little panel lines that are missing on the kit and it's just because I really needed them for the damage uh, that comes out on this side. There's not a huge amount of holes on this side, but uh, well nothing like the other side But there's plenty of damage so I need to replicate that as well But I'm gonna shut up for a few minutes and uh, let you watch And here you see, all I'm doing is just making my own shade of green. So with the uh, COVID-19 lockdown, it's been hard for me to get uh, certain things. And I didn't have a cockpit color uh, specifically for the RAF. And I have the same similar problem with the external colors as well. I don't have the, the matching colors uh, other than in Humbrol paints, believe it or not. I had every single one of them in Humbrol enamels. Uh, I don't know why I haven't used those in a long time, but I still had them. And uh, that was actually quite handy because those are the ones that are caught out on the reference. So I could use those as a, a reference color uh, sample essentially to, to mix and match my acrylics to do that. So you can see I go through, uh, paint up the cockpit very simply. I don't spend a heck of a lot of time detailing it because both kits are going to have closed canopies. Uh, I'm not sure if you've built the Airfix kit uh, of these before. They both have closed canopies on them. Uh, if you can get aftermarket ones, uh, vacuum form ones, but uh, no, I don't really need them anyway. One of the canopies is going to be broken in the end, so that's fine. We'll leave it as it is. Uh, simple, quick, easy build of the cockpits. Nothing too fancy there. You'll notice the only thing that I really do different um, with this part of the build 
essentially is with the glue. Normally uh, you'd use a model glue to put it in, but since I painted everything up already and I didn't want to muck up any paintwork, uh, I decided to use uh, a super glue. So that was pretty much it. So you'll notice that being applied later. Other than that, all pretty straightforward. A little bit of highlighting, a little bit of weathering, not much. All right, so here you can see, I'll just try on a little bit of a different technique. I've seen a quite a few modelers doing this using a double-sided tape just to hold parts for spraying, sort of give it a try. Work to treat, really happy with it. Really simple way of doing it. Normally, you know, as I was painting these separately, I'd have them on sticks, things like that. Um, but because I don't, I can get away with, it, with having one side unpainted. It's just a perfect method for that. And here you see my little color samples. So I've taken the Humbrol samples and uh, used a Tamiya paints there that you saw just for a bit of a rough guess guide I suppose to say to see if they were the right color I ended up having to mix my own uh, and I actually had the uh, Tamiya RAF dark green so I used that anyway but uh, yeah I'm happy with my mixes actually I was quite surprised that they came up pretty close to the original
and here you see I am doing the masking. So these are really solid edged um, paint schemes. You need to, to really mask them off properly. Next time, I think I'm just gonna splurge and buy the paint masks when I can because uh, this was a fairly tedious process. I uh, essentially tried to make it look as close to the uh, kit as I possibly could and uh, cut them all out on my little Tamiya mat and then stuck them onto the model. So it took a bit of time doing it. I don't mind tedious stuff like that though, I'm kind of weird. But I think next time, just to save a bit of time, I will uh, buy the masks. Now you see here what I'm doing, this is a good little tip. If you notice back there, you might want to go back and have a look to see the bubbles forming in my airbrush paint pot. And that means I've got a little blockage and that's why I'm having trouble with paint flow. So you'll notice when I try to spray the uh, rear stabilizers, I'm not really getting anywhere. And then I notice the bubbles and I'm like, yep, that's my problem. So if you have trouble with flow, that's one easy way to uh, look at it and, and see what's going on and just simply take it apart, clean it, easily done. Okie dokie, now we get to put on the decals. Now, these are a little on the thick side, uh, but they do respond well to Mr. Mark Softer. So I uh, get them in position, put some Mr. Mark Softer on there. Occasionally, you do have to trim them a little bit to get them to conform to the panel lines, because the panel lines on these kits are rather deep. Uh, but uh, yeah, not too bad. Worked quite well, just take your time with them. Uh, be patient and clean up any excess. Uh, softer on it so you don't uh, damage the decal because if you leave like a, a blob of it sitting on top there it usually ends up damaging the decal but uh, take your time apply it a few times and you'll get a good decent fit Now here you can see I am doing the decals for the squadron marking. So the squadron markings for 602 squadron, uh, they all seem to start with L as the first letter. So I found one on the internet that was L-O-W and I figured L-D-W, close enough. <laughs> so uh, done, yeah, we'll take that. And uh, I couldn't trim down the D, but I thought, nah, that's all right, doesn't matter. And uh, yeah, so this is gonna be obviously the uh, the worn one, but I wanted similar markings to the squadron. Uh, now the serial number on the tail is, is different and incorrect, but uh, that's all right, who's gonna know? No one's gonna check that. And I didn't tell you that, so sh
Right, now, uh, Flight Lieutenant Yuri's canopy on his plane uh, was broken. Now, I don't know if that was uh, done after he landed or it happened during combat. So, for example, the canopy might have been stuck and they had to break it to get him out. Uh, I honestly do not know, but uh, we replicated it anyway and uh, very carefully carved the hole out there and I spend a lot more time than that just tidying up the, the hole and you'll see it uh, in the photos later on. Uh, thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed this build. Uh, I had a lot of fun doing this. This is uh, something a little different from my normal. Uh, yeah, please uh, like, share and subscribe. This is going to be a giveaway model or both, both of these kits are going to be giveaway models for the premium subscriber. And uh, so if you want to enter the premium subscriber competition, I'll put the link to the video down below. And uh, that way you can get your choice of a kit or a built, built model when it's drawn. And uh, we also have our monthly giveaways as well. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and uh, we'll see you soon.